All right, Lou, uh, we've got a lot of questions in from people about the top five things um, that people need to know about bench pressing. And the first part is the actual setup on a bench. So what's the best tips you can give to people uh, when they get on a bench before they even lift the weight? Okay, uh, basically to get up on a bench is, um, <clears throat> it's up to you how you do it. Don't pick some great bencher and try to follow it. Like these guys have had the huge arch in lower back, invariably they end up with a bad back and they can't bench. If you get that huge arch, you also, and your feet up tucked under you, you eliminate all leg drive. You might pick up some leverage, but you eliminate leg drive. So you don't want to really, you know, that's, as I said, that's a personal preference. All my greatest benchers had their feet out in front of them. If you look at Kenny Patterson, Rob Fusner, George Halbert, <clears throat> all these guys had their feet out in front of them. They used leg drive and, and body shock. A lot like the Russians do if you watch the Russians bench. Um, so um, that's, and, and the key to benching with the arch, it's the upper body. You want to put, I, uh, we would always grab the bar, pick yourself off the bench, pull your shoulder blades together, sit down on the bench, and then be pushing the weight out. You want to start pushing the weight out before they hand it to you. That way your back muscles are activated. And, um, <clears throat> and also the arch is where the bar lands. You want your upper back arch, not necessarily lower back. So that's the first, uh, about set up, that's the way it goes for me. And um, always keep the elbows underneath the bar. You talk, we're talking set up here. But at the same time, when you bench us, we would get the bar out over, then straight down and hopefully straight up. A straight line is the shortest possible way. If you flare your back, everybody tells you push the bar back over your face, and most of those people have rotator injuries or torn pec muscles. When you turn, you're rotating, you're going to have a rotator injury eventually. So if you press the bar straight up in a straight line, it's a shorter distance. And it's much like declining. You can decline more than you can incline. So that theory right there proves that it's really the best way. Jim Williams, 675 bencher, back in 1972, pressed in the straight line. A lot of guys eat old original one side barbell press in the straight line. So I hope that covers most of that. So uh, after your setup, then you move on to unracking the bar. When do you uh, use a handout or not? Um, I did my biggest raw bench, 515s, not much. I weighed 202. I took it out myself. I took all my benches out myself. These guys, I got guys that weigh 30, 50 pounds, and they get a handout with two and a quarter. It's pathetic. You never learn to use your back. Bench press is truly a pullover and press. It's a pullover and press, like it or not. And um, so I think you should go as long as you possibly can without a handout. Like I never used one. In a contest, in a meet, um, I bench 496 without a handout. So, you know, I'm no, I was no bencher, you know, I mean, I'd made six in the bench, eighth in the bench, ninth in the bench, but not, you know, I was no great bencher. Yeah. But um, I did no handouts. All of our guys took their weight out. You saw not long ago, Kenny Patterson in a training, t used a four or five, taking it out himself, mm -hmm. doing it like an empty bar. <clears throat> so, um, after, uh, go ahead. In a bench shirt, you have to have a handout. You mm -hmm. know, these shirts you got today, there's no way you can get a bar out by yourself. So you do have to have a handout. Make sure you get a good handout guy. But always take the bar out and then let it settle down. Just let's let your arms unlock just a little bit. And then we say, yeah, well, you've got the bar in the shirt. The weight's in the shirt and not in your arms. But you got to keep your arms. It's all about the arms. you got to keep the barbell in the arms. You know, the pressing motion has to be in the arms. Once it gets out of the arms, you, you're going to miss. So now you have the bar uh, unracked and coming down. Should they drop the bar, bring it down under control, or how should they? How should the eccentric portion of it be? Um, heavy weights definitely need to be keep it under control. Um, and then uh, you watch a big Julius bench. He, he, there's a big guy just spent seven sixty five roll. He keeps it under control. He don't let it crash down on him. And um, I did a lot of ballistic benches. How George Haber did. I would with train with speed weights. I would drop the bar, catch it, and then just hold my chest and reverse it. It's, it's called ballistic benching. But you can only do it with speed weights. Uh, when I could raw bench 500, I used 285, um, two set of chain, and uh, choked many or a monster at the top, but added another 25, 35 pounds. <clears throat> then when you're pressing it back up, what are the tips? I know you, you said one time in the gym that you're not um, pushing the bar away from you. You're pushing yourself away from the bar. Right. Um, yeah. What tips can you get people when they're trying <clears throat> to get it from their chest up to lockout? 
Well, when you press the bar, like you said, I would drive myself into the bench trying to push myself away from the bar because the barbell weighs more than I do. And when you drive yourself into the bench, you act, absolutely activate your back muscles. I've seen guys with lat muscles and upper back don't even know how to use them because uh, they just it's all an arm bench. Then. It's like boxing with an arm punch versus them using your whole body. And uh, so just learn to push yourself into the bench and start it out. Drive, drive away from the bar <clears throat> in a straight line, yes. if possible. <laughs> so when people uh, miss from their chest to about three inches off their chest, what are they lacking? Uh, nine times out of ten, it's your upper back. Uh, when the R -bell, your elbows get parallel to the floor, that's the worst possible position, like a floor press. Um, that would be your, that's your triceps. That's where you know it's a mini max. You're pushing. Uh, you, know, you know, you got the most resistance with the minimal amount of force that you can generate. That's why the floor press should be done correctly. Set a bar on the ground, relax and press. Everybody, um, when you put the bar on the floor to the floor press, that's everyone's sticking point. You know, you may have me, the bar would touch my chest. That's my sticking point. Long arms guy, the bar four or five inches off, that's their sticking point. So, but when you break a floor press record, you should break your bench record. You're breaking your sticking point. And so when you figure out a sticking point, um, what would you do? You, uh, try to improve upon that on accessory work. Yes, there's two ways to beat it. Beat it. One, training at the sticky point on the power rack. Mm -hmm. uh, do a lot of power rack benches below, at, and slightly above, uh, or speed will out will break a sticking point. You know, if that wasn't true, if you could bench 300 pounds, um, you know, you bench, you know, you bench a 250, 275, 300, miss three and a quarter. Why? Because you can't press the bar fast enough to complete the motion. So really, speed has a lot to do with the sticking point or training the, the area in the power rack. Uh, two ways to do it. You can start with the bar at your sticking point or press on a lower pin and drive it up into the bar and hold it there uh, where your sticking points are. I believe, uh, I believe a lot of guys in this country where uh, uh, Julius is training right now does a lot of uh, isometric benches. And I'm all for isometric benches. They, I mean, isometrics... Pushing maximal isometrically produces 15% more uh, muscular uh, um, recruitment than regular benching or regular anything, <laughs> for that matter. To build a strong bench, <clears throat> is the key the accessories or the main movement? Personally, I believe it's, it's the accessories. Uh, anyone can bench, squat, deadlift, clean, jerk, or snatch. You have to train the special small exercises. And... Uh, for one, the bench press, just for just to start out, the most basic thing, I believe, and Bill Kazmar did this as well, use three grips. Like we normally do nine sets of benches. It could be nine sets of three, nine sets of five, nine sets of six. But um, three sets on the smooth, this finger touches the smooth. Three sets, your thumb touches the smooth. Three sets, your little finger touching the rings. All of those benches, even the, the wider one for big men, you're activating a lot of tricep work there. It's the arms. The arms are the key to the bench. You can flex your pecs till the cows come home, but it's got to go lock out a bar. You do need them. <laughs> For all your accessory work, did you have correlations to your bench, like your Williams presses, your JM presses, your heavy dumbbells? Did you know if you could lift more weight on those, it's going to carry over to a better bench? Absolutely. Close grip incline, very, very steep. We actually stood up to do it. That was one. Straight bar extensions. When I could push my straight bar extensions up, I got a record. Heavy dumbbells. Uh, you know, I was like average. I did 13 with 155, 13, 11, and 9 at one workout. When I could break that record, uh, any of those records, I normally could break my bench record. Okay. Plate raise is a little suspect. Sometimes I could go up in the plate raise, but my bench wouldn't go up. You just never knew. You got to have real strong side and rear delts as well. But um, a lot of guys you, you get a lot of shoulder injuries because they don't train their rear and side delts. They train the front delts, but not the rear and side. Out of all the accessory work you've <clears throat> seen done, if you had to pick one, what was the most important accessory to build a bench? Uh, well, there's a lot, but a couple of them that you, you don't see often is dips, heavy dips. And uh, I like to have push-ups with weight on my back. So uh, I did, a, you know, Personally, I did 58 reps with my feet on the ground and a bar on one of a bar of our power racks with 100 pounds on my back. I, with the, the same way, the same angle, I did a guy, Hoss the Boss, he weighed 330, and starting from the bottom, I got five reps of Hoss the Boss. So that was pretty impressive for me, and I didn't weigh much over 200 pounds. Um, dips, a lot of guys like heavy dips. Hobbard did a lot of heavy dips. 
Um, if you look at way back at Pat Casey and so forth at Jerusalem outside Barbara, did heavy dips. We would do heavy dips. We would set the weights on a box and then do quarter dips where we would get in there and just lift ourselves off the box. This the extension. And with real heavy weights, like 350, 400 pounds. Halbert did a lot of those. My friend Jesse Kellum, he had 80 foot dip bars. And, Je and Jesse would walk down 80 foot dip bars, turn around, come back with and without weights. It just builds an elbow extension. And that's, that's how you get a big bench. Lateral triceps are called the lazy head. They don't do anything. For your joints, they're obviously a crucial part to this. So would you train them differently than you would the muscles? Yeah, I would do a lot of reps. Like I've, I've done 200 straight reps of 25-pound dumbbells. That's my record. I like really, really high reps for soft tissue training, ligaments and tendons and so forth. And the same thing for triceps. You know, two, 300 band pushdowns um, uh, every other day, something like every time you're in the gym. It seems it's very crucial to have all these records. Like you, you can remember every record you've done to carry over like 200 reps. Yes. You, you try to make everything a challenge. Is, is that important? Yes. Every time you got to add to it. You got to add reps or weight. You know, if you do the same thing, you'll get the same results. <laughs> and that's, that's just, then it becomes work and not yep. training. You don't want to just work. You want to train. To conclude this, Lou, have you anything you want to say to people who are beginning and benching or trying to get the biggest bench possible? Well, like I went through, I think some of the main things, you got to use three grips. I talked about them. Close grip incline, very, very steep. When, I, when my incline went up, my sticking point disappeared. And uh, I was pretty good at that for some reason. I wasn't good at seated press, but I made 370 in a steep incline. My hand touched and smooth. Why, I don't know. Straight bar extension. Because when you bench press, you gotta, you're holding on to a damn straight bar. You don't have an easy curl. Mm -hmm. You don't have dumbbells. You have to use a straight bar. No one does this. Uh, it's, it's hard on the elbows. I've always bring up uh, A.J. Roberts. He came here and he could bench 710. A year later, I think he'd been 722. I kept saying, yeah, A.J., you got to do extensions. You got to build up your, your, your muscle around the elbow. And he said, uh, they hurt all the time. I said, because they're weak and we'd argue about it. Finally, of all people, Dave Tate told him he's got to do them. Uh, but well, within under two years later, he benched 910 pounds by doing the extensions. So that's how important they are. Uh, plate raise basics. Plate raise, side delts, rear delts. Um, decline press. No, I, no, I don't see anyone do declines. You got to do decline. Well, I really like decline dumbbells because you just set them down and they barely roll back, put it right in the elbows right here. Then you extend them up out of there. And um, like I said, you know, but the heavy dumbbells, I had a kid come here, he lives in town, and he's got a 605 raw bench at 220. So he says, West Side. So, well, tell me what you do. He does everything all our old guys would do. And he showed me a video. Uh, the, how important are dumbbells? Well, this, to me, this is how important they are. Show me a video. He, uh, he set the dumbbells on his knees. He rolled back 215-pound dumbbells for nine reps at 220 pounds. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how important dumbbells are. you got to push up the dumbbells. Um, it just, they stabilize. Yeah. Don't get in machines. Stay out of machines. Machines build muscle, but they don't build motion. By that, I mean they don't, there's no stabilizing in a machine. They just go in one curve, you know, the machine's doing it all. You got to be able to control the damn thing on yourself. And, um, well, that's pretty much it. If your only goal is to gain weight, work the heck out of your triceps and gain weight. Yeah. If you want to stay in the weight class, you know, uh, sometimes if you want to keep getting a bigger bench, you got to say, do uh, you know, I want to be in the weight class and want a bigger, you know, your bigger bench? Because at some point, you're going to run out of, um, you know, the ability to get a bigger bench if you don't go up a weight class. That's just all there is to it. So hopefully that's enough tips that uh, get you going. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Lou. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm.